Would you like to turn your idea into an invention, but you don't know where to start? Every day, people just like you come up with great ideas that have the potential to be successful products. Sometimes even by accident. The problem is knowing how to get your idea out of your head and onto the shelf. And there are plenty of mistakes and scams to be avoided. What you need is a map to lead you step by step through the invention development process. Let us show you how to conceive, prototype, protect, refine, and monetize your invention. Inventing Success, your guide to becoming a successful inventor. As we've already discussed, the best kinds of inventions are inventions that solve problems that people already know they have. If ever there was an example of a product that solved a problem that I knew that I had, it's today's invention, the self-spotting bench. Let me tell you something, when you get caught under a barbell and can't lift it off yourself and end up having to either roll it down your whole body or tilt it off to one side, it is a very unpleasant experience that you remember for a long time. So I realized that if I wanted to continue doing flat bench work, I needed to come up with a way of making sure I wouldn't get trapped under a bar. So there's an inherent contradiction. In order to get stronger with flat bench work, you have to work the muscles to the point of failure. But with flat bench work, absent a spotter, if you work the muscles to the point of failure, you're in trouble. So we have a problem. It's a known problem. Lots of people work out with weights. Lots of people use barbells on flat benches. And if you don't have a spotter available, you need a solution. So we have a great opportunity for an invention. If you're on a bench and you can do something with your legs, there are several steps that have to happen to figure out how do I convert motion of my legs into a spot of my barbell exercise in the motion of my arms. Well, the very first thing I did was not figure out some sort of mechanism or how do I connect things mechanically. The first thing I did was I spoke to several different people. I spoke to a serious uh, trainer, a, you know, workout trainer. I spoke to uh, several different doctors, an orthopedist and a general practitioner and a sports medicine person. The answer was, there's no problem, it's safe, you can do that. So the challenge is, how do I convert the energy available or the motion available in my legs into some sort of assistive movement during the bench press? As it happens, the bench that I was using for bench press work already had a leg extension attachment on it, which is a contraption like this where you put weights on it and you swing your legs up and that's basically a quadricep exercise. If I can somehow figure out how to convert this movement into this movement, then I've got something. So I looked at modifying the bench to build something that I call a gallows assembly. Basically, a vertical pipe here, an upright with a horizontal component, so that's sort of my clouds, and a cable that's connected to the barbell and then goes over a couple of pulleys, down under the bench, and all the way across to my leg extension. So when I swing my legs up and the leg extension goes up, the cable gets pulled. So this is moving this way and this ends up going up like that. That's how I convert the motion of my legs into an assistive spot. 
but it still wasn't done because there's a problem with that basic design. This is where we need to have the service loop. Basically, extra slack cable so that as this moves up and down, it can move unencumbered the completely natural motion of free weight uh, exercise, which is where all the benefit comes from. Not only do you improve the strength of the major muscles, but you use all the small muscles for fine motor control and so forth. So it's much better than um, like the machines you find sometimes in gyms. So we have this extra loop of material, and then we have the tensioner, which is another pulley here, and that's connected to an arm that is pivoted here and then we have a spring, a tension spring here so that this is free to swing up and down on an arc as this goes up and down and this cable is pulled tight. I soon realized that this is a much better way of spotting. Why? Because I had inadvertently created a closed loop system. Closed loop meaning I have the thought in my head I can't complete this, I need some assistance, that thought translates into extend your legs. So I would extend my legs just the amount I needed at just the point in the range of motion of the exercise to give myself the spot that's required and it was miraculous. Far better than any workout I'd ever had with a human spotter. I was able to do forced reps to a level and with a degree of precision that I had never been able to do before. I set out to solve my problem and ended up sort of accidentally stumbling into something that isn't only a problem solution, it's an incremental improvement in an exercise activity that people all over the world, millions and millions of people do, which I believe is going to create a very substantial market for this product. So the second phase, once we came up with this brilliant idea, was to reduce this invention to practice. We had to come up with a prototype. We had to come up with a way of proving that this idea is something that actually could tangibly manifest in the world and work and do what it was supposed to do. This is another example of something that anyone can do. I mean, I, I made this thing out of steel and welded it together and I actually purchased like uh, fitness equipment components, the pulleys and brackets and everything so it would look like a real piece of fitness equipment, but I didn't have to do that. It could have been made out of two by fours, it could have been you know, made out of ropes and whatever else. Anybody could have done this. Would it have been pretty? Not necessarily, but as long as you can demonstrate that this concept works, that this idea actually solves the problem it set out to solve, that's all you need to accomplish for phase two of the operation, which is the reduction to practice. This is the prototype self-spotting bench. Here we can see the leg extension device, which is connected by means of a cable which runs underneath and parallel to the bench surface, all the way forward to a pulley where it transitions to a vertical direction and runs up the full vertical height of the gallows assembly to another pulley, creating the service loop, which is maintained by the cable tensioner, up through another pulley and then connected to the barbell. Here's the self-spotting bench in operation. You can see that the self-spotting apparatus, including the cable, does not in any way impede the normal operation and function of the bench. But when a spot is required, even for a very limited percentage of the range of motion, all that's necessary is to extend your legs, which tensions the cable and provides the vertical assistance. The same self-spotting motion is also very useful for returning the bar to the cradle when the exercise is complete. To protect confidential information, Inventing Success does not discuss the contents of a patent until it issues. Before attempting to apply for a patent, it's important to search in three distinct areas to determine how novel your invention is. The first is in the commercial product area. This is looking for products that may already be available for sale. A simple Google search or searching on eBay or Amazon is a great way to uncover products that already exist. The next area is searching existing patents. Google Patents is a great plain language search engine which makes it very easy to search the prior art. There are a few tricks to searching patents. The first is trying every possible combination and permutation of descriptive words in the search bar. And the second is, once you've identified patents that seem to be in the general category of your invention, 
Look through the patents in several areas. Look at the drawings, look at the claims, and also, very importantly, check references and citations, which will lead you to other related patents, which may be closer to yours. The final place to search is also generally best done on the internet, but there are many product ideas each year which are neither commercialized nor patented, but they're still published. What I mean by this is, you'll find websites such as the thehalfbakery.com where people post ideas for inventions, yet never patent them or commercialize them. This is still considered publication and would jeopardize your ability to get a patent on a similar invention. This invention is a perfect illustration of the kind of thing that anyone can do. There are no gatekeepers here. You don't have to have an Ivy League degree. You don't have to be an engineer. You don't have to have a million dollar high tech lab. You don't have to know how to weld or you don't have to know calculus. This is a problem that anyone could have and if you keep your eyes open and you keep your mind open, you don't worry about what exists and what doesn't exist, you don't worry about what people tell you you can do or what has been done or will never be done, you identify the problem and you come up with a solution and you figure out by you know, hook or by crook using spit gum and, and, uh, and paper clips how to demonstrate that this is viable, you are well on your way to having an invention that can find a home in the commercial marketplace and make you some money.